every single one of you listening has a stress, has a headache, has problems, and you're either really fixing the problem or you're band-aiding it. Right. And the idea is if you only know how to band-aid, bring an individual in that can actually fix the problem. Bring outside perspective in. Real business, real business, real business. Whatever your situation is currently is not your forever situation. That's really what real business owners is, man. Like, we don't care where you come from, yeah. where are you going? Our goal and our job is to reduce the mistakes that you have to make or the money that you have to lose. You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, don't give up. You learn, adjust, and continue to move forward. Welcome back to the Real Business Owners Podcast. This is Trevor Cowley, as always, Kel Goodman. What up, what up? Guys, it's good to be with you today. Um, here's the deal. You know, we, you, you guys know that we've been going through the process of trying to phase ourselves out of our business in terms of the day-to-day -day stuff, right? Putting leadership in place. And, you know, we wanted to talk about a topic that is, is close to home, right? That hits close to home for us anyways. And, and not saying that necessarily the leaders that we have internally are, you know, bad leaders. They're actually amazing leaders. Um, they're doing an amazing job. Um, taking on certain roles uh, or duties that we used to have to do, and that now they're doing it. So they are taking things off of our plate, taking stress yeah. or headaches yeah, away. We get, we get two steps out, one step yeah. back in. Yeah, you know? so it's yeah, we're kind of playing that dance. You know, we think we're on the way out, and then we get pulled back in, yeah. right? Because again, there's certain situations that maybe they haven't seen before. They just want or, advice or help or right? us. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. the bottom line is, is like, dude, we're expecting them to step up and lead something that's even beyond our level at this point. Mm -hmm. Like we, we've, we've never ran multi eight figure businesses. We've yeah. built them to this point with our hustle and our grind and our, you know, like our just dragging. We're, it we're to a couple success. dumb sales guys yeah. from all these yeah. years, man. Like yeah. we didn't go to Harvard. We didn't go to, and and not that not you that have you have to, to or anything yeah. like that. But we're kind of at that point where we're like, hey, man, we need like. We need that real that that dude that's done it before. Well, the, or the, that I, chick that done, yeah. that's done it, whoever it is, right? Yeah. Like the the idea though is really what we want to talk about is hiring for that role way before maybe you need to hire for that role. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if somebody's built a fifty million dollar business or exited a hundred million dollar business or two hundred million, whatever it is, and you're only doing ten or fifteen million dollars a year. Don't you want somebody that has that perspective that can drag you through the 20s, the mm -hmm. 30s, the 40s, and $50 million mark? Yeah. And they already kind of know what to expect to a certain extent. Yeah. There's obviously always surprises. There's always curveballs. That's just part of the game, right? Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, they can forecast better than we can. We, ha mm -hmm. we haven't ran a business at $40 million or $50 million. We could serve entrepreneurs that have that are currently running a business doing a million, three million, five million, seven million, eight million, even to ten million. But you know, last year between our organizations doing sixteen million dollars in revenue, you know, it's starting to get to the point where, you know, we need a different perspective. Mm -hmm. We need a larger perspective on our business yeah. because we already know if we are able to do what we're good at, we can do our thing and turn it into 30, 40, 50 million dollars a year, but you can't do that with one foot in, one foot out. Right. Okay. We're plateauing the business that way and we're trying to put, hey, run this organization, take it to 30, 40, 50 million, and we're just going to put business yeah. in the front door for individuals that haven't even run a five or $10 million a year business. They're great in their departments, they're great in their roles, but what about systems and processes for a 30 or $40 million company? We've never built systems and processes for a thirty or forty million dollar company, yeah. and if we're at ten or fifteen million right now, we have to start thinking about what does that system or process look like at twenty, twenty yeah. five, thirty, forty. We don't know that, and again, we could guess our way through it, mm -hmm. but the fires will be drastic if we're having fires at thirty sure. million or forty million, where we're going to have to have an entire team of firefighters putting out shit right. versus maybe going high, high, high level right now. And I'm, not, I'm not, not necessarily saying that you guys listening to this need to go high, high, high level right now, but are you a solo entrepreneur that needs to get an assistant or yeah. needs to get a manager in place yeah. so that they can do the hiring? The idea is really understanding where you're at and where you're trying to go and project forward and maybe go into the future and say, well, in a year from now, I'd love to have this type of a role. Right. Well, if that's the case, why don't you start looking at that now so that if it took three to well, six months to find it? 
let's speak, let's talk about the two to I, I, the, what I'm seeing right now. Two reasons people don't do it, right? Okay, and and kind of why we're having some of the, the the experiences that we're having right now is there's two reasons in my in my opinion, my view is one, um, just like our old episode taking strategic step backs. Sometimes it's hard when you think you can do it, and like why pay that. You know, why go pay that $200,000 a year salary and, and take away from all these other things, you know, when we can do it, we can do it with what we got, right? Um, so there is a financial part of it, which that's not a big deal for us right now. We're yeah. willing to pay it. Yeah. To, we're willing to pay to go a, to for growth. We're willing but to take a step back to go forward. We understand that we've been at those other right. levels where, we, where we've where we hit this, the concern that you're talking about. Right. Not saying that we have that concern, but right. that is that's a, a common one. That's a common Our one. Problem, we've experienced that too, yes. Our problem, and I, and I hate to say it, but it's true, we want to bring the dudes and chicks and, you know, that have been here with us up. So we lean on them, we're like, you're going to be our dude because you've shown these leadership skills. But we're expecting them to do something at a higher level than we've even done it. Yeah. And so we don't even have the leadership to lead them to create that leadership that they need in order to really yeah. fucking do what we need to be done, right? Yeah. And so it's like there's this loyalty factor, and it's noble, and it's admirable. But at the same time, you're taking away from them if you're not willing to go out and get the right leader. If we're not the right leader anymore. And we need somebody that can come in and really, really raise up our higher level accountants and CPAs to another level. There are some of our higher level guys would have the leadership now to actually, now they're learning from a guy that's done mergers and acquisitions and scaled to 50 to $100 million and done exits. Now they're like, holy cow, we're working under this goat to where I can go and be that guy yeah. in four or five years, yeah. right? But because we love them so much. We're like, well, we want to bring you guys up. And we think we're capable for a long time until we hit these these ceilings, right? And so there's actually a theory by this guy. I looked him up because I couldn't remember his name, for, but he's the founder of, of Infusionsoft. It's Clay Mask. And Clay Mask has a theory. He says it's 99% accurate in his uh, uh, history of building Infusionsoft, which is ginormous, and he exited it for like sure. multi- Billions. Eight or nine figures or something. Um, but he says you can't raise people up uh, beyond two levels. So if you bring in your dude, right, like you bring in like some stud and he shows leadership skills right out of the gate and he's a sales manager and then he's a, you know, uh, you take him to a sales manager and then you take him to like Operation, a team leader and then yeah. you take him to like, like whatever, a whole department or whatever. I don't know, but he's saying you can't really get people above two, two levels of where they're at when you get them kind of a thing. And so he's like, you have to bring in these extra levels in order to get the best out of your team and put everybody in a position to win. But he's like, you you have to go out and you find somebody that's going to have more energy than you because even your leaders are only going to operate at 60% of the energy that you operate at, right? So if I'm operating at my 100, which isn't everyone's 100, there's some people that have a much higher energy or you know, uh, attitude towards everything, your leaders are naturally that you develop are only going to operate at 60%, right? And so there's this barrier of only two positions that you can raise them. And when they hit that two positions, that's usually like the ceiling. And nobody wants to feel like they're at a ceiling. You know, you always want to try and create more opportunity no matter what. But he's saying he tracked it and it's been like 99% accurate in building this massive organization that he built. Like, you bring someone from just customer service to a, you know, a PM shift uh, manager, and then all of a sudden they're the entire, you know, department manager. They're pretty much going to, they're going to be at that level from now on. They might and not so, be able to be regional manager over the Western United States, right? right? They might right. be able to manage a store, right? You know, maybe that's where they kind of cap out, but then you got to bring somebody in that have maybe ran, you know, regions or yeah. entire organizations of multiple you yeah. know locations that runs the region or the entire organization yeah and and the thing is what you guys need to understand is sometimes you know when when we try to you, you stretch an individual and say hey I want you to be amazing and great and I want to give you opportunities that's all fine and dandy and that's exactly what we want to do and when you and what I, what I want to make very clear is just because you're bringing somebody maybe from the outside in it should not negate the opportunities that the internal people have, right? Like 
if they have an opportunity to excel in a certain department, they should be financially compensated to the point where they're making just as much or right. potentially more because they're, they found their zone of genius. Right. right. And to a certain extent, we could be helping individuals grow by bringing outside perspectives in to where they're like, holy cow, this person has done this, 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 and this. I want to be in proximity of that individual and learn just like Kel said. Mm -hmm. So maybe in 10 years from now, I can tell other companies, hey, I've had experience doing this, 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 and this, and now you're that much more valuable to other companies. You can command a $250,000 yeah. a year salary because you worked underneath an individual that has built a $100 million exactly. company or $200 million company. And last time I checked resumes, it's very rare to see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, yeah. and, and and if you've been a part of that and you've seen it, even if you weren't the one leading the charge at the very top, top, but you were right there in proximity at the top, top, because you're running departments or you're doing your thing at a high level, you're going to see things and have a different perspective than other people have because you're working in proximity to this individual that has done such amazing Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so if anything, if I'm telling Kel... Uh, to dunk a basketball, and I want you to dunk a basketball, but we're both five seven. Yeah, I'm the fucking idiot, right? Because I'm asking you to do something that you've you haven't done before, right? And that's basically almost impossible for you unless you purposely focus for like a year <laughs> or two straight on your jumping skills. We can do it. There was like Spud Webb and what is what yeah, was Bugsy the other, Bugs. Bugsy Bugs, yeah. our heroes, my heroes, yeah, yeah. right Shout there out. with Altuve, yeah. Altuve. Yeah. Yeah. We know baseball. all we know all five seven and below <laughs> athletes that have, have actually crushed it. And, uh, and again, we know all of them. So yeah. there's like three. Right? Well, there's a reason Four, I wrestled right. in high school and didn't yeah. play yeah. basketball. I haven't know? dunked on anybody <laughs> uh, that it, that it, that's within a decade of my age, right? Yeah. And now at this point, I can't even say right. that because a 27 year old probably dunk on my yeah. ass. But but hey, if you bring me up two levels, yeah, you know I get two, uh, you know a three foot stool and then a six foot stool. I could dunk you from could that dunk motherfucker, that and yeah. I'm winning now, right? Mm -hmm. And so and that honestly is kind of the dude's theory is he's like I tracked this for a couple of years, and the dude the reason he became wildly successful and amazing CEO of this company and built it up and sold it is he became a full time recruiter. It's, he, he got himself out of the weeds of the business. He said, my full-time job is recruiting. Even when we don't need it, I'm constantly headhunting for the talent the up one. there because mm. I've realized now after, after doing it for a certain amount of time how much happier all my employees are because now they're winning under – they're raising their levels because of the leadership that he brought in. They were already at higher levels, right? So he's like, I'm elevating my whole team and putting everybody in a position to win, right? And this actually came from Brad. I'd had a couple conversations with him about this dude. And uh, I was like pretty intrigued by that. I was like, man, that's, that's crazy because we're going through this right now, you mm -hmm. know? So I open up to him about it. He tells me this whole exact same story. I'm like, man, that makes so much sense. Like, Next level, right? Like, yeah, come like in the here. Like 30, 40, 50 yeah. million dollar person. Like, dude, but, if we had a leader come in here that's like ran a complete a, a division of the military, like, he's obviously going to have different leadership skills than we have. Absolutely. It's going to elevate all of them, mm. right? And so, you know, it, and it takes some humility to get there. When you're a business owner, man, like, you want to be, you want to be like the person. The person. You want to be the whatever, man, the but guy even, on the white but, horse, but, but, you know, but, but, but I mean, we even had, you know, uh, wasn't, was it Mark in here? Mark Jennison. Uh, I am the, I am comeback. Yeah. I am a comeback. Um, Oh yeah. He, he said he, that. He flat yeah. out said that. He's like, dude, I already, I have the vision. He's like, I just know I'm not the guy to run it. Yeah. Right. Like at the end of the day, I know what it can be. Yeah. And, 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 and really that's to the point we're at, we know we can run a, you know, 10, $15 million company. There's a few fires that'll happen. We can put them out and we can just do the same thing over and over and over again, which is what we have been doing. And we've known that we've needed to be exiting the business to a certain extent because the bottleneck is us. We already yeah. know we can push way more business in the front door. If anything, we're turning away some business right, right now because the bottlenecks that are happening. Um, but we need, we need, we need high, high level, even though that we're not at the high, high, high level yet. Again, you guys right. might think that we're at a high level because you do 1 million and we're doing 10 or 15 or mm -hmm. again, depending on whether you're talking about of all of our companies or just one of our yeah. bigger companies or whatever. But at the end of the day, we don't, we don't see that as high level, right? Yeah. You know, uh, or high, high, high level, excuse me. I mean, it is medium, right. I, guess, right. I, I, I would guess. And, 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 and we've, and again, you guys need to ask yourself this question as well. Are you doing the same thing over and over year in and year out? 
like in terms of revenue. Right. Like we, we we've got to a point where we were we were jumping up in revenue. We went five million to eight million or ten yeah. million to eleven million, and last year, the highest number that we've ever done between right. all of our companies. So is it kind of moving in the right direction? Yes. Yeah. But do we have the ability to completely ignite it and blow it up if there's somebody inside picking up the shit right. uh, or creating systems and processes? What you guys need to understand is employees can operate at a higher level if they understand exactly what they need to do on a day-to-day basis, right. literally broken down. Here's your duties. Here's your lane. And it can feel like that they're winning because they have an itemized checklist or something. Okay. I got everything that I needed to get done today done. Yeah. Sometimes when we're just busy and we get a lot of shit done, you go home and you're like, okay, what did I get? You, you don't, you don't really know. But if you had a checklist of do these 10 things and right. at the end of the day, they were all checked off. You could look at it and say, damn, I actually got a lot done today. Yeah. Right. And so then you feel self-worth and like, yeah, I'm being productive and I'm actually moving the needle in my department. Yeah. And that gives you self-confidence, self-worth that you're performing at a high level at your job. Therefore, you feel good about doing what you do. Right. But if there's no measuring stick in, or performance inside of your organization, then your employees don't know if they're doing a good job, they're doing a bad job. Sometimes they think they're doing good. Sometimes they think they're doing bad. But there's really no measuring stick. Right. You know what I mean? Like, what's the scoreboard for them? Exactly. Right. The systems and the process. It's more fulfilling when you know how productive you were. Correct. Right. Correct. You know, exactly. and it's more um, honest when you know how unproductive you. Correct. Were. <laughs> so you know. when you get a checklist and you're like, I got to get these ten things done today, but you only got four of them done, you're gonna feel a little bit shitty. Well, but that should fuel you to get that shit done the next. Well, and the and next I time. and I think this will vibe with some people too, like the individuals that that might be traveling a little bit for their business. You know, I remember, you, I mean, still it happens, but, you know, earlier on, if you try to take a vacation, you're still working. Yeah. There's still fires that are happening in, in, in your business. Yeah. So they're still calling you. There's still a lot of duties that need to be done right. uh, while you're not in the office. And if you're getting to the point where you can't be gone for two or three days or for whatever it is, and without having to get pulled back in and have to put out a fire or hear about some bullshit that's going on, then that's the point where you probably need to really start thinking about an internal operations individual, somebody that's there to put out those fires when you're not there to put out those fires. Right. That's the one foot in, one foot out. I'm there sometimes, I'm not there sometimes, yeah. but every time I'm not there, the cat's away, the mice will play type right. situation. If that's what you're if that's what you're dealing with, then you're you're in need of an individual that can operate it on a day-to-day basis and hold people yeah. accountable. Yeah, have enough humility to to realize like, okay, Admit where you're I, not I'm out of my league and for everybody's greater good, we need to, we need to execute. We need to execute in this area. We need to bring, we need to bring somebody in, um, that can help us go to the next level. Some people don't have that humility, right? Cause, and I get it to a certain point, but like, Hey, me, Trev just had a conversation the other day, man. And, and this is how, you know, when you're at this level. Okay. Like Trev's frustrated. He's like, dude, I'm in the weeds. I'm struggling. Um, we need to pump the brakes a little bit. Like we can't keep selling and, I'm like, but at the same time, bro, like I get that. I agree with you. But at the same time, like we've built up all this massive opportunity that we're not fully executing on. How long is that opportunity window going to be there? Right. If you don't, if you don't execute on it, but we wouldn't be in this position had we done it sooner. Right. Had we come in and we were like, oh man, like, and it sneaks up on you. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. like, and, and that is the, whatever, that's the name of the game. But at the end of the day, like, Trev's like, I don't want to ruin our name. No shit, neither do I, but I don't want to miss out on all this opportunity, okay? So now we know. when We can have this honest conversation with each other like, okay, dude, we're out of our league. We need to bring, we need to bring some talent in. So that's what we're hunting for right now. And we, we can't just be anybody. It's got to be legit an expert to come in and really fine-tune our transitions, our systems, our processes, our you know, uh, leadership, everything. You know what I mean? So it, that's the only way that we're going to touch 30, 40, 50 million yeah. within the next two or three years. And you brought it up right before the episode, man. You're like, we, we've, we've seen it done. We've seen it done. Like Jefferson started years after us. Right. But he went out, he executed on, on really bringing in an outside CEO and a CFO. And now he's able to go and run his business from uh, higher, higher levels looking, looking down. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Like, yeah, that's it, some great hindsight. Yeah, you know? it is. You know, and, and also he just got, he got coaching and mentoring early on, sure. which gave him the information yeah. to do those things. Right. right. And so, you know, if you really want to bring a full circle, 
It's he put himself around individuals or in proximity of individuals that have done it before. Yeah. And he just basically said, dude, do this, do this, do this. And this is basically what we're doing to you guys now listening to it. Right. You know, we're taking, again, information. We're seeing patterns. We're seeing some people doing something at a high level, some people not doing it at a high level. We're giving you guys the game without having necessarily pay the big, big bucks to get some of this information. But really what it boils down to is, uh, what area in your business are you lacking? You might not be, you know, doing something that's a 10, 15, 20 million dollar level, but you might be doing something at a half a million dollar level and you're feeling a, a, a pain or a stressor or the headache where you're wanting to quit and give up. What's making you want to quit and give up? How can you either outsource that duty? How can you hire somebody to take on that duty internally, whether it's a manager, ops, whether it's a department head, whether it's just an assistant? You know, everybody's right. level's completely different. If it's just an assistant at exactly. 15 or 20 or $25, cool. Right. That might be just the thing that you need to help you go to whatever that next level looks like for you. But it might be a CEO type individual that's an integrator where you could throw as much business at him as you possibly want. He's got all the systems and the processes or she's got all the systems and processes in place that is needed for that type of flow. When you yeah. open up the dam and the water's just coming in, right? right? And so we're at the process where we're at the dam and it's got a leak here or a leak there. And we're like, but we want to open it up. We yeah. want, you know what I mean? And we're trying to slow business down from coming in. It's like, it's and, 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 and I don't want to really use this analogy because I wouldn't say it's sinking, but it's almost like if there's fires, in other words, you're taking on a little bit of water on your ship, but then there's more water getting poured in. So it's like, are we, what, what are we, you know what I yeah. mean? But at the same time, you want to, you want the water. In other words, you want the revenue, you exactly. want the customers. And so it's this weird catch 22 it phase. It's like, is, is taking on a new client serving the old client? Are we going to be able to serve them at a high level if we take on the new one? You know, is it serving our employees taking on a new client if they're already stressed or overwhelmed because of a system or process? Is right. it working anymore at this high of a level? Yeah. Right. So there's so many questions that you have to ask yourself and you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Can I fix this problem or can I just be the band aid for the problem year after year after year? Yeah. But yet it's very repetitive and you have the same headaches every single year, but this year's going to be different, right? Yeah. That's what you're going to say in December and January. This one's going to be different. This is going to be our year. Sure. Uh, the only way that you're going to make it your year is if you adjust something that's not working uh, or, again, you stop putting band-aids on the problem and you actually really get somebody hire a fucking doctor to diagnose the problem and fix it. <laughs> we need a fucking CEO doctor. That's, you know, uh, been the doctor at a 30, 40, 50, hundred million yeah. dollar level. Right. And so let's say for instance, your business is at a million, you want to go to 5 million. Maybe you need an individual that has ran a five or $10 million business before. You yeah. don't need the guy that we need or the girl that we need at 50 to a hundred million because right. you don't want to pay a quarter million dollars a year for somebody like that coming in and operating your business on a day-to-day -day basis. But you might need to hire somebody at 60 or 70 grand a year to take off a lot. If you make 200 grand a year, I bet you, and you're dealing with all the stress and all the headaches, I bet you would rather make 130 grand a year with far less stress and headaches. And then by year two or three, now you're making 250 to 300 with way less headaches, yeah. right? Or you could plateau at that 250, that 200 mark, band-aid everything over and over and over and over and over and just stay stuck at the 200 with the same issues reoccurring over and over and over and over. And I think that's going to resonate with a lot of people because I think yeah. a lot of people ignore the problem so so many times. Like, oh, shit, again, band-aid. We've done this with band-aid, band-aid. It, when when is it time to actually fix the problem and stop using band-aids? Right. That's really the question. And entrepreneurs need to ask themselves, am I really fixing this problem by doing X? Or am I just putting a band-aid on it right now so that I don't have to fix it right now? Because right. I got a million other things I got to get done. Right. That's and, the real question. And when when are when is it time to actually be loyal to your people to the point where it's like, okay. I do need to bring in another level so that they can continue to grow. Yeah. Because I've struggled with that. It's like, no, I want our people to be the ones to like, I want to grow this all together. I is don't want to bring in an to, outsider. Is it you fair feel to like it's unloyal pressure? to them. Is it but fair it's to not. put the pressure on them though? Right. 
like if, if Kel's never done anything like that in business and I put the pressure on it and say, Kel, I expect you to turn this business yeah. into a 30 million Pressure's dollar great to a point, right? Yeah. But and then and, and then is it unrealistic? Yeah. That's really the question. Right. And the idea is we have to ask ourselves, are we doing our people a service or a disservice? Is bringing somebody outside doing them a service or a disservice? Yeah. And you and and really when you boil it down at the end of the day, you are just one team. And you need to understand as the owner of that business or the owner of that team, you have to put everybody in a situation to succeed at a high level, even if they don't completely understand why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. If you know it's the right thing to do for them, for your business, for your customers, for you mentally, yeah. then that's something that you have to do because you put that person in there and it goes to $30 million a year or $40 million a year, that individual that was a leader making a yeah. hundred grand a year now might be making 200 or $250,000 a year. Cause now you're doing $30 million yeah. a year, or 40 million. So the opportunity there for them to earn is greater yeah. because the company is earning at a greater level as well. Right. And yep. so you have to look at the entire picture because sometimes people give themselves credit where it's not due. Like, I think I can do that. Sure. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and they might have good intentions of believing that, but they don't understand everything that comes with it because maybe they haven't been an entrepreneur before. Right. And we know what under the hood looks well, like. Well, on the flip side, you know what I mean? I've been there, right? Like, yeah. so when I, the last time I was an employee, I used to get kind of resentful. I'm like, why, why is, um, why is our, our old business owner that, that I worked for, why, why, why is he bringing, bringing in all his yes. homies to run this deal? Yeah. Why is it? Oh, I could have done that. Like, yep. you know what I mean? And I, and I get this weird little sense of entitlement too, yeah. where I'm just like, well, I've been top sales guy for two years. Why didn't he promote me to that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't understand, yeah. you know, and you just look at it like, Oh, he's just bringing in his homies, yeah. you know? And like put him in this position. Little did I know it was like homies actually have ran businesses at these levels because I'm not a business owner. I don't understand that. Yeah. So it's going to require sometimes a hard reality check for the employee. Uh, but it might even require a hard a hard conversation with them. Be like, look, man, I, I'm I'm trying to get you to another level, which means I got to bring in people above my level. Mm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like, you know, I don't even know if he knew to have that conversation back then. But it's like with we you. do because yeah. we've had yeah, that yeah, experience yeah, yeah, yeah. now. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. you know when and we've already been having those conversations with our team. It's like you know, hey guys, like we realize that in order to elevate you, it might require bringing in, you know people above all our level mm -hmm. you know i know you've had that conversation recently so um all good shit on the horizon you know what i mean but it's a great problem to have you know like i started the episode by saying we're a couple dumb sales guys you know just trying to figure this out you know but we're not we're we're, we're pretty we've been pretty clever and we've been hustlers and we have figured out we've learned a lot and we've made a lot of right moves you but know where did but, we start though where did we start we need mentorship and leadership above our level in order to go to the next yeah, level. yeah but too. where but where did we start dumb sales guys yeah, we did. That was the starting point. Yeah. Are we are we are we still there? No, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but that was our starting point and that's what everybody identified us as. Right. Exactly. You you Kel was the dumb sales guy that made, that happened to make 150 grand a year when he was young and thought he was the shit, yeah, right? right? Trevor made 100 six figures and you know, he was how does this idiot make six He's a dumb sales guy, right? Like that's what it was. But if we stayed just dumb sales guys, we'd still just be making what we used to make when we right. did that. Obviously, we've been able to evolve out of that. And that's really what it comes down is to evolution, yes. right? Are you evolving one as a human being, as an individual outside of this old identity of a dumb sales guy, right? Um, you know, now we're you know, entrepreneurs running multiple businesses, podcasts, doing the social media, you know, there's a lot of different stuff going on right now, investments that we've had or made. Um, there's just, we, we've evolved a lot and this is just a new phase of evolution for us. That's unfamiliar, yeah. you know, to us. And again, this is something that we're, we're learning to navigate, but just yesterday we had a high level individual in here that's exited two or three different companies. Some of them in the hundreds and yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars going over some of this stuff with us. And again, guys, because we don't know it in terms of, we've never exited a business at a hundred million or 200 million. Yeah. So we're not going to sit here and try to fucking pound our chest and tell you that we have, or that we act like we know what the fuck we're doing. Right. That's the difference between most people on social media. They're going to act in a certain way, even if it's not, true and we're over here saying look we don't got all the fucking answers yeah like have we evolved from two dumb sales guys absolutely we've evolved from two dumb sales guys but we're not two fucking guys that have exited a company for 200 million dollars yeah. either and right. we've got to be real with ourselves so what do we do 
entertain the conversations with individuals that are interested in us because they see what we're doing yeah. and they respect what we're doing. Like, damn, you guys really have a lot of potential. You guys can be the next 50 or hundred or $200 million company. Yeah. Um, and how cool is that? That like, I was thinking about this yesterday when yeah. Mike left, I was like, you know, what's cool, man, is that we, we have the opportunity and we're going to have his ass to on too. Him. Yeah. yeah. We'll have him on the show, maybe even at one of the events coming up. But, um, you know, when he left yesterday, I was like, man, how cool is it that we're aligned with him now? And he's actually trying to help us get this, get this role. He's actually like out of the kind of his heart. He didn't ask for nothing. He's like, I just want to like come in and, and see where I can possibly help. Right. Like how cool is it that we'll be in that position one day? You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. of that connection that, and the resources that he brings in to help get us to our next level. It's like now we're, we're people that can go help other people when we're not out chasing the buck anymore, right? Mm -hmm. We can go help people that are like, we know the weeds you're in at, at, at you know, 15, 20 million, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Here's now we, we can need. help you get, yeah. here's, the, here's the hack to get to 100 yeah. million. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, we're going to know that soon. And really, I think that's cool. And and really, really, I mean, it's, it's I, I think we're getting close to the tail end of, you know, the game, so to speak, of right. entrepreneurship, right? The The, you know, every game has levels, right? And then yeah. there's, the end, right, <laughs> of the game, so to speak. The and, then, credits. and then number two comes out, right? And you're like, oh, God, there's another, a whole nother game to the game, you know? Uh, that's entrepreneurship. Yeah, but no anyways, I, I think what I'm trying to say is we're getting to the point where uh, we've gone through a lot of different levels, a lot of different phases in business, and this is, this is a new phase. And one of the last phases I think that people go through uh, is we've been through the phase of scaling and growing up an a figure business we've been through making investments that were terrible and some that are good yeah. you know we, we've we have a lot of experiences and this is going to be a new experience for us just like kel talked about is going to be a learning opportunity for us to go out there and understand what it takes to bring on a high level individual how to yeah. incorporate that in something that already exists at a high level, yeah, right? Um, they're obviously going to help us with that because yeah. they've maybe made that transition before. But, um, you know, even even he brought in somebody else that helped him build. He was the guy for him. Yeah. So yesterday we met with the with, with homie, um, and he said, oh, this is what you need. I think I got a guy for you. Literally in the afternoon, that guy was sitting in our conference room. He's like, no, nah, dude, I ain't ready to get my hands dirty again. I've already built and exited two companies for this guy over here. Um, and he's, he's, he's like, working he's, on some passion projects, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean? you know but that, they, told they, stuff, but yeah. he ended up bringing in a resource to us too, that we're like, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. actually a huge yeah. piece of the puzzle, yeah. you know? And so, man, it's just crazy how that works, but we're, we're eight figure dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can go help people from seven to eight figures. We can yeah. help people from six to seven and seven to eight. That's pretty cool. Yeah. By the time we're done with this. We're gonna be able to help do eight figure dudes become nine figure yeah. dudes and, and, and ladies. We don't forget about the lady, no matter who it is, but yeah. I always feel uh, like I got to correct that. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> fucking politically correct these days. We love you. We love everybody. We do. Okay? Um, it's just we're dudes. We're dudes. We're dudes. Like dudes. So we're biased <laughs> to dudes. Like our mind is a dude mind, yeah. you know? So it just is what we it is. We just help eight-figure uh, entrepreneurs become nine-figure entrepreneurs. Yeah, and we are entrepreneurs. Let's just identify as that, yeah. you know? I guess anybody can identify as that. Set up, uh, you know, any entity and you're an entrepreneur. But um you know, we, we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I mean, we're just keeping it 100% real with you, just like we always have uh, in terms of really where we're at, what we're facing, what we're dealing dealing with at this point, and where we're trying to go. And we feel as though that you could learn from it, this experience or extract something from it as yeah. well. Because, again, you don't have to be a company trying to go to 30 or $40 million to know I need a new piece right. to my business or I need another player in my organization that can help me see something that I'm missing or help me take it to the next level, whatever that level is, whether it's a hundred grand to go to 200 grand yeah. to go to 300. If that's the level, then great. But at the end of the day, every single one of you listening has a stress, has a headache, has problems, and you're either really fixing the problem or you're band-aiding it. Right. And the idea is if you only know how to band-aid, Bring an individual in that can actually fix the problem. Bring outside perspective in. And that could be joining groups. Right. That could be hiring a coach one-on-one. -on -one. 
That can be having somebody come in and consult with your business, looking at your shit and saying, man, this is, have you ever tried this, 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 you know, throwing things at you that you wouldn't have ever even thought about because they're at such a higher level than you. It doesn't matter. We're getting the external piece in your business that already understands that whatever that looks like to you, the idea is just to get new eyeballs or perspectives on the same problems that are repetitive in your company. Yeah, right. I agree hundred percent, man. And the only thing I would add to that is when, when you're thinking about this and you're thinking, okay, at $10 million, I'm probably going to need to hire that, that role. Just realize it's probably sooner than that. Yeah. That's really the biggest yeah. message of the episode yeah. that we want to start with is like, Hey, our you ego. probably need to do it yeah. sooner. Cause that's yeah. what we're thinking right yeah. now. Yeah. Our egos, <laughs> our egos, uh, held on a little too long. You know what I mean? And now we're just like, fuck an ego. Like, let's get, let's, you don't get, ever realize it's something. ego until you realize it's ego. You know, like <laughs> everybody wants to be at the helm with all the recognition and all the glory. You know, I don't care about any of the glory. Give me the bigger paycheck at this point, right? right? Give me a situation where it gives my employees an opportunity to earn a bigger yeah, paycheck. Exactly. Give everybody. Give, give give put me in a position where my customers are yeah. the happiest customers that exist on the planet. Like that's really what it comes down yeah. to. And the greater good for your entire community. You, you know? know what? Really what it comes down to is what would you do right now in your business if you forgot about the money? Like remove money from the equation completely. Like where, what are the pieces that I need? Yeah. And identify those pieces. And then you could start putting dollar figures to them and figure out what you can add, what you can't add right now. But at least you have a list of, of, of identifiable things that you need with inside of your organization, removing the money equation, just looking at your, your business and saying, I'm missing this, this, and this. Then you have an action item plan over the next year. I need this, this, and this, I need to get my company uh, stable enough to, to take on these expenses. Yep. Right. Um, and so those are just suggestions for you do whatever the hell you want with them. Um, <laughs> because we know you'll do that anyways, regardless. So the, for the maybe 1% of individuals that are true, true action takers, we hope that this, uh, this episode, uh, brought value to you today. And, uh, you know, other than that, guys, we wish you nothing but the best and all the success in the world on your entrepreneurship journey keep pounding your face against the wall Mm -hmm. hopefully one day Mm -hmm. you'll break through that wall and be able to walk right out that bitch (laughs) you know and have somebody else cleaning up your shit right so good luck take care see you next week peace